what is happening on college campus. Everything's fine. Fine and peaceful and Harvard. Nothing. Yeah. You can get Harvard, in. Yeah, Go for it. Yeah, you know, they're they're just fighting for the people. Um, yeah. So we have the bad luck of our book coming out the you know right in the middle of the uh, horrible terrorist attacks of, from, from Hamas, just absolutely you know yes. her horrific. And I mean bad, bad luck just in the sense that it's kind of hard to get anyone to pay attention to anything else. You know, like, like so. Yeah. But there are a lot of free speech issues. You know, are, are around what's going on like since since the Hamas attacks. But a lot of times they're not really what you think. It's been kind of funny. Uh, to see people suddenly discover that consequence culture or accountability culture, the, the people who made the same argument, they're finding their names on you know lists of people not to hire because they signed the the Harvard letter um, at, at, at saying you know it's entirely Israel's fault. You know, right. So just for context, right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, I spent the week looking at this pretty carefully. Hamas attacks Israeli civilians yeah. on October 7th. Yeah. And that night, Children. 30... Yeah. Yeah, going around r- raping and killing and kidnapping innocent people yeah. who, in their homes at music festival. Just absolutely heinous and barbaric and yeah. unjustifiable on any grounds. Not not acts of war. These are all... These are not two military forces. Do, right. if, if it was war, these are all war crimes. Yeah, like all war crimes, all like, you know, off to the Hague for you. Yeah. If you were a legitimate fighter of some kind, yeah. Leaving aside the the broader Israel Palestine all of that, yeah. let's leave that aside. That night, thirty plus organizations immediately published, yeah. including like Amnesty International's was Harvard it, chapter. Was it? Yeah, that, that's not. Um, that's not a, a letter saying this is essentially entirely Israel's fault, and all violence that comes from this is all on the part of the Israeli regime and the apartheid this and that. Like, this is before there was a response. This, yeah. is, this is just like, oh, what is there, 1,400 dead Jews? That's all the Jews' fault. It's like blame the victim on a what? massacre yeah. scale. Yeah. And then the rest of the Western world and elite colleges all kind of join in to celebrate that is what it seemed like. Yeah. Like, well, all around the country and around the world? There was a lot of, there was, the, 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 I think they thought that it was going to be very well received because, and, and I try to point out, university presidents not being willing after the Hamas attacks to actually say, and because I, I, I know a lot about a lot of university presidents. I, I know a lot of them are very pro-Israel and, and were, must have been utterly disgusted. I mean, the light as any human being must be but with, with the barbarism of the, of the Hamas attacks. Them being unwilling to say something condemning the attacks immediately afterwards, um, whereas they talked about every other issue from Ukraine, you know, condemning the invasion of Ukraine to yes. um, uh, to, to anything related to Black Lives Matter, even like relatively small ones, and this this horrifying thing where where they have students who have families over there, you know, uh, and, and a lot of a lot of schools showed real un- unwillingness to say anything about it, and if they did, they talked about like violence on both sides, very measured and and equivocating, which they were not on any of the other social justice issues. No, that's the product of cancel culture because they were those university presidents were afraid of their own students, their own administrators, and their own faculty. Not all of them. Just the ones who actually, um, th- th- you don't want to get into an argument about Israel versus Palestine. Like, like, basically, like, but that's kind of a dogma on a lot of these campuses. And so, and if you're reaching the point where university presidents are afraid, in this case, to say what they really think um, and have to be, you know, sort of coaxed into it by angry donors and people, you know, yeah. principal people like Larry Summers, something has gone very, very wrong. And by the way, I also think that those students, Harvard students, actually believing that this would be, you know, n- not not received with a, with a huge backlash. That's partially cancel culture, too, because Jewish students and pro-Israel students were kind of afraid to disagree with this group, so they never actually got the moment of being like, maybe this is a little extreme to say that they, you know, the, the rapists were right. So that is how I understand the most fundamental argument for radical free speech, mm-hmm. is that... So you have it's this worth group, knowing. right? Yeah. You have this group. They come out, make a really radical, fundamentally indefensible statement. Mm-hmm. But the way we know if that's indefensible is someone else gets to come along and do verbal, peaceful combat with that idea. Yeah. And they duke it out in the public square, and they and 
everyone else gets to judge by watching the arguments made who makes a stronger argument. Yeah. But that's, and I, I would think in a world like that, Harvard being more measured makes would make sense. Yeah. Right? It's like, okay, look, we're not going to put our finger on the scale. The way we had every week prior to this. For round. every single other thing <laughs> that's social justice that's yeah. remotely related to. Now we've got neutrality and free speech. Right. And that seems like the, that's how I read the problem is it's just completely, I think Cliff Asnes on Twitter, um, who was a big donor to University of Penn and basically yeah. said, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. It was like, it's all asymmetrical. It's, uh, it's asymmetrical. Um, and, and a lot of it, uh, these, are, these are opinions that are popular with administrators. Um, and that's one of the reasons why FIRE has been screaming at the top of our lungs. You know, a less bureaucratized university would be a more free university because you know, you know, the, the extent to which these shout downs are sometimes, to the which cancel culture is actually pushed along by DEI administrators is something that happens in case after case. I didn't actually realize that, because uh, I was at the, the, the Christakis shout down. I was actually the one to videotape the Christakis oh, shout down. I didn't realize that. Yeah, no, so I, that video of the of like, like, this is our home. You're making our home unsafe. It's like, no, it's Yale. What are you that, talking that, that, about? That, it's that, like your home? That was me because I, I was videotaping <laughs> it to show that he kept his cool because I believed his, his job would be on the line um, uh, if it was just he, he said, she said. And then when I found out that the Yale student newspaper, I was told by a reporter, was going to, because they had, they videotaped the whole thing, by the way, that they were going to publish their own edited video to try to make Nicholas look like he did something wrong. I'm like, okay, you, I, I have no choice. I, I have to actually publish this now because I want to show that he showed preternatural calm um, or, 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 yeah. or, or, uh, in the face of what was really like a... a, 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 a Deeply threatening... Psychotic mob. Yeah, the angry group of, of people around him. Oh, there were DEI administrators in that crowd. I didn't realize that. Um, that uh, with Carol Hooven, who who at Harvard, um, who oh, um, by the way, kind of like oh, Harvard discovered free speech now. Um, and uh, so Claudine Gay, she came out. She's the new president of Harvard. She's the new, so yep. the new president of Harvard. She came out when her first talk actually involved a really good statement about freedom of speech. Was that entirely voluntary? I don't know. Um, her school finished dead last in the fire rankings this year, which they actually had to admit were based on really good science um, at, after a while. And so she, she did say one good thing about free speech before this. But then, of course, what it's... What do they do? Yeah. And then, of course, she, after this, you know, after this, she says good things on, on free speech again. And, but, of course, like the howls of, like, isn't this convenient? Oh, but sorry. I was getting to the, the uh, last thing that happened at Harvard. So as far as like a, a great example of like the atmosphere for free speech uh, prior to this, Carol Hooven, she's an evolutionary biologist. Um, she wrote a wonderful book called Testosterone about how testosterone affects you on every level. She, she, You're getting into the biology we're not allowed to have. Yeah. You're getting into stuff. What is this? What is this? What she, is this? No, no. She no. went on TV to Shut talk up. about her book. Okay. <laughs> and uh, And she was... She tried to be as compassionate as she could. She was like, we should be compassionate towards trans people. We should be as understanding. We should even use their pronouns. Like, she really bent over backwards to try to show how compassionate she was being, but then said, but biological sex is a fact. And it, it's, 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 it's real. No, and no, ta-da! No, 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 no. At Harvard, a DEI administrator, you know, uh, calls her out, and suddenly students are boycotting her class, and they won't be her TA, and they're signing petitions to get her punished. Uh, and her friends turn on her. Some, some of them do. Some of them d d come to her quietly and say, you know, we're pulling for you. Which happens all the time in these instances. Right. I, won't, I won't say this publicly, but I, I, I'm so sorry what's happening. To you. I'm going to sign the petition for you to be fired, but in private. I'm that gonna... really happens. That really happens all the time. I signed it because I didn't feel like I, and then it's like, it's really, I'm really the victim here. I had to sign the petition again. My you. disgusting, repulsive t Cowardice is yeah. really what makes me the tragic character in the story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 otherwise, I'd look bad on Twitter or something. Um, and so she got incredibly depressed. Uh, she, in an interview, she said she actually had su suicidal ideation for the first time in her life. And she eventually left Harvard, you know, over this. That's not a great atmosphere for free speech and academic freedom. Yeah. And what should have happened, if, you know, if you're going to be making statements at all, they should be things about things happening in your own community, like this professor has academic freedom and freedom of speech. And, you know, the idea that kind of like we're going to do anything to establish an orthodoxy around that is nuts. So, okay. So suddenly I'm supposed to believe that Harvard has discovered free speech. Um, and and uh, that these other schools are now saying that they're discovering political neutrality. And it's like, no, you're not. Um, the, now, I, no, I want to be clear. Uh, fire 
as welcome them saying good things on free speech. Um, and we actually think political neutrality is the right way to go um, for universities, like the like the um, 1967 Calvin statement uh, that came out of the University of Chicago, which basically says we actually we can't actually take positions on all of these big global things without establishing an orthodoxy um, for, from the top down. No, no kidding, you know, like, like and you've been doing this for a really long time. But the people saying really now, I'm 100 percent with, and I'm also like. And I also just don't buy it because it, it, I've, you know, my I started right after 9/11 at Fire, and I, 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 and I defended a lot of people who said some pretty insensitive things, you know, like someone joking that anyone who can blow up the Pentagon has my vote was literally my very first letter. It's a joke, insensitive joke, um, and it's, yeah, and he was yeah. he was he was eventually forced out. But every time higher ed perceives the threat from coming off campus, every single time they suddenly discover. Freedom of speech. Uh, th- sometimes they even will mention you know, maybe neutrality will come out of it, but they they, they like to play the victim and, and and that essentially like oh this is the new McCarthyism like it, like so, that one comes out really quick instant it's in but as soon as it actually I'll start to believe that they're true and this will be a process of years if they really mean it now the next time someone from within the university comes with a you know d- demanding a more social justice oriented punishment cancellation or statement i think they're going to i think they're going to uh, this is going to last a couple of weeks essentially and if it, uh, yeah if that if that um, i'd love to be wrong though i keep on saying